What's up, 6-8-J, coming to you on this Saturday. I'm joined with my brothers from another mother. Is that possible? We all have the same mother. Let me stop. Uh, I'm here with Mike O, my brother. I'm here with Alaskan Squeeze. I'm here with Frankie the Man Legend. What's up, fellas? How you guys doing today? Hey, James. How are you doing? We're good. Guys, I am phenomenal. I am better than good. Um, unfortunately, I uh, – uh-oh, update complete. So I'm having my watch there. But – Literally in the last 30, typically I'm on time and I was kind of expressing that to you guys. Uh, my bad for being a little bit late. The couple, couple things that kind of uh, threw me for a loop. I was trying to find this email uh, that my friend Metal Law Man sent me. He wanted me to uh, look for this email. And then at the same time, uh, this company that um, I was speaking for back in the day, sometimes they would have me uh, go to various places. It might be a different country, whatever. Uh, they're launching uh, some type of crypto, <laughs> like product asset or something. Um, and, um, I, you know, I heard about it. Um, uh, one of the top people in the company reached out. Uh, they've been trying to get me to go speak. Um, and I don't even know what I'm speaking about, but obviously they'll send me the information. Um, and then um, they got a little bit more, you know, aggressive. And so uh, we, we started negotiations uh, probably about a week ago. And uh, then this morning, I, one of the one of the things I asked for, I said, look, I'll go, but only if everything is paid for from my wife and I. So they're sending us to Dubai um, to go speak and, and uh, launch this um, this product or company, you know, to speak on behalf of that. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll learn pretty quick. That's what I do. So um, but for many years, I did that for 25 years and kind of walked away from it about six years ago. Promised my wife no more traveling, no more uh you know, uh, launching and building and, and motivating globally. And, and, uh, Michael, you know, that better than anybody, the story. And, uh, but you know, uh, I said, Hey, it's one of those places I want to get to. So, uh, why not? So it, it's, uh, right now we're trying to negotiate, negotiate times. Cause I think they were trying to do the first week in May, unfortunately for me, well, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for them, I've got to be at XRP Las Vegas. So, uh, they're going to either move the event around or figure out what they're going to do to get me there. So we'll, we'll uh, stand out with that one anyway. So guys, that's the reason I'm late. Hate to put you guys through that first <laughs> couple minutes of explanations, but how, so besides that, what are you guys up to on this amazing Saturday? Well, I'm just chilling in my car because it'll be too noisy in my house because my boys are off school. So I figured I'll <laughs> run out to the car and uh, sit out here and do it instead. Hopefully they won't come running out going, Daddy, the trees fell on the house or nothing like that. So I hear you, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm just enjoying this roller coaster ride and, and seeing seeing where we go next, but it's exciting and it's fun. So I'm in here for my uh regular therapy, crypto therapy, we should say. I love it. I love it. And Frankie. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> trying to enjoy my Saturday, uh, watching all this red in the market. Actually, yeah. Uh, was anticipating it, so I'm looking for some bargain, uh, some bargain cryptos here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I was telling Michael that uh, there's a, you know, a lot of people are bullish. So a lot of times, people get blinded by, uh, you know, what they want versus what the charts are showing. Or <laughs> so uh, I expected mm -hmm. this. Me and Mike had this conversation probably a few days ago. I said, Mike, be prepared. Uh, you know, we're gonna have a pullback. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, it plays out. And it's not that I'm psychic. It's just that if you've been around this game long enough, you understand how it all works. It's the same until it's not. Uh, but also, I want my man um, uh, Alaska Squeeze to know that I heard you, brother, the other day when you asked me to play the song for you. So because he's like, wait a minute, La ladies get ladies night. What do we get? Well, brother, guess what? This is for you. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are back in town so you know i didn't want you know alaska squeeze to feel left out he's like man look if i can't get no theme music maybe i need to join ladies night i said brother i don't know if you look like the rest of the ladies so i'll get you your music and, and there we go so uh, <laughs> just well, I appreciate favorite. that. Thank you. Now we got our tune, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's we, still hard to compete fun. with Ladies Night. That's hey, for sure. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's a classic. That's a classic in a big way. So, guys, let, let's get right into it. Um, for those of you guys, uh, some people may not know you, so just give me a couple minutes, even though uh, you have been on the show before. Give me a couple minutes of who you are prior to crypto. We're going to start with Mike O. Mike O, what did you do prior to crypto? Let's do that in about a couple minutes, brother, if we can. Yeah, no problem. Well, I'm I'm just basically a, a self-taught serial entrepreneur. I've uh, been doing it for about 25, 30 years, never really worked for anyone else. 
uh, got into crypto because although I've been making my own schedule and doing my own thing for several years, uh, I've had to sacrifice a lot of my time and energy because um, I became um, obligated to the to what I've created for myself. So, um, you know, with uh, four car lots and some other things going on, uh, you know, real estate and, you know, the crypto investments, I'm getting pulled in a lot of different directions. So ultimately, like James, like you always say, um, I'm working on my plan B slash plan C to to regain some of my free time back for myself. I love it, man. I love it. Frankie mm -hmm. Legend. Yeah. So uh, I just got into the crypto space about three, three years ago, roughly. Uh, prior to that, in my current occupation, I'm a call center manager. I've been in the call center industry for about 14 years. Twelve nice. of those spent in management. I had, I, you know, my uh, the amount of employees I've uh, managed is anywhere from 100 to 300 at times mm -hmm. at the largest. So I have a lot of experience with employees. But um, you know, like Michael and yourself, you know, um, what I want to do is just have more free time. I get break out of the matrix. You know what I mean? Uh, be able to live and retire comfortably. But more importantly, uh, help my family members who are stuck in the matrix and in the grind too. you know, allow them to enjoy life and, um, you know, just have some more freedom. Yeah, That's I love it. So, and, and real quick, before I go into uh, Alaskan um, squeeze here, Mike O has been my friend for uh, almost 30 years. Uh, when he started his first business, it's the same time I started my first business in California. So that's how we met. Frankie Legend, uh, even before I met my wife, what was my wife's best friend. So just so you guys get a little mm -hmm. take on who these guys know me very well. So these aren't just some, you know, regular dudes here. And, and Alaskan squeeze, one of my newest uh, brothers here. Go ahead, brother. The show is yours. Yeah, I've. Um... Been, uh, I moved to Alaska 18 years ago from Liverpool, England, and um, I've never looked back since. It's uh, been a land of opportunity for me. Um, everything's grown. I arrived with a backpack. Um, that was it. And now I have uh, a chunk of land, a house I built, and two little boys and me, and we're good to go. Um, I got into the crypto space probably same time as Frankie, about three years ago or so. Um, started out. Um, with the usual Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that stuff, realized it's way too expensive and yada, 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 discovered XRP. And again, like my Alaska journey, I haven't looked back with XRP. So currently working in a national park, driving trucks. So I'm a nice road trucker. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about my story so far. And you're, all, and you're also the VP of uh, ARC Institute as well. So that's a that's a big deal. We had you guys on. Uh, it was a pleasure having you guys on uh, here uh, last week. But yeah, definitely appreciate you, my brother, being here. Uh, so let's get right into it, guys. And this can be really open to anyone. I, I won't go around the table, but I'll just kind of open it up for anyone uh, to make a comment. And then also if anyone wants to elaborate or add to that. Uh, so first question is going to be thoughts on current market conditions. Obviously, a lot of people are freaking out. Uh, it's, it's red in the market. You know, I've seen so many comments. I've gotten so many messages. What do you think I should do? And I just I don't remember ever uh, announcing that I was a financial advisor. So people start freaking out and they start contacting you. And what should I do? You know what? What's going to happen? And it's just like. All that tells me you don't, you know, you haven't done your research. You haven't done enough research. You don't understand. And and I always tell people, you know, I'm, I'm a very uh, uh, passionate guy, very loving guy, but then also very blunt guy. And that is, you know, I always say, look, man, you should not be in a space if you don't know what you're doing. If You know, if you're putting your money into something and you don't understand what it is because it's shiny, because other people have success stories and there's a problem with that. You're not only uh, cheating yourself, but you're cheating your family uh, out of, in my opinion, a life changing opportunity. So. Going back to the question again, thoughts on current market conditions. Um, is this a pre having dump? Um, you know, uh, as we always see, I'll leave it open to anyone to comment. Yeah, I, you know, it, it could potentially be the pre having dump. I mean, but people are going to give it their own definition. But the bottom line is, and, and this is something I know from businesses, I'm not, you know, the smartest guy. I don't have it all figured out. But one thing that I do have is hard work, and determination, and willing to go through the difficult times. And and I know that that will ultimately get me to the finish line. So with this situation, you know, obviously nobody wants their investments to go down, but it's going to shake out a lot of people that aren't prepared or don't have the the mental stamina to get through this uh, particular time. So. 
what I'm choosing to do in this situation is just love and enjoy the ride. It's a roller coaster ride. We all have to to ride it. And when it comes back around to to the start slash finish line, a lot of people are going to jump off, and and hopefully the four of us and many others are going to say, let's do this again. And ultimately, we'll get a, a a lot more thrills out of this ride and and enjoy the finish line much more than someone that got shaken off the ride. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. A lot of people are going to, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, probably uh, head for the hills, you know, especially if they are, they're not patients, which is one of the biggest things you have to be in the thing is patience and control those emotions. Uh, anyone else want to add to that? After you, Frankie. Yeah, I was just oh. going to say, if, if you look back about a month ago, Bitcoin was actually at a lower price, you know, but I think what's causing a lot more panic right now or a lot more fear is the the altcoins uh they took a big hit this you know starting on friday so they dropped a lot which is fine uh, i mean you know you got to expect it i mean there's going to be that pre-having dump bitcoin really hasn't dumped too much but i think there is still room i, I mean i think we could see sixty-one thousand. i think we could see fifty-one thousand. so yeah. just be prepared for that situation and those scenarios you know like have a plan a plan b don't dump all your money into one altcoin right now because it's down 15, 20%, you know, dollar cost, dollar cost average in, uh, yeah. be strategic about it. It does help, um, you know, having a little bit of understanding of technical analysis, at least the basics, right? You see that Bitcoin was overbought in the stochastic RSI for the one week and it still has room to come down, right? So, and the, the daily got rejected, so we're still coming down. So I think there is still room, you know, to come down. So don't spend all your money on this, this dip here, you know, save, yeah. save some dry powder for the side. Yeah, no, I agree with you, brother. I think the problem is, Frankie, uh, kind of responded to that before we hear from Alaskan Squeeze is, you know, a lot of altcoins didn't move the same as Bitcoin. And so some of these assets, like if you look at uh, XRP and others, uh, they're they're still sitting around the price where, you know, when Bitcoin was 35,000. <laughs> so, so, you know, even though we've had some pumps, uh, they haven't moved like Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin moved up drastically. Altcoins moved up some. Some altcoins had a pretty big boom, especially the means, because, you know, obviously you got a, you got a lot more people out there wishing, you know, upon a star, hey, let me throw this and get rich quick. So when a lot of people are doing that, it pumps the memes up. But the problem is, is every time Bitcoin hiccups, uh, even a little bit, coins get wrecked. And then when it hiccups a lot, coin, coins get devastated. And it's just a lot of that is, is again, normal uh, for people who don't understand. They think, oh, my God, it's a roll my altcoins. No, we're just not in altcoin season yet. And when it happens, trust me, you'll know more than you know this dip. You'll know the altcoin season because either you're prepared and you if you have yourself a position well or you miss it. And if you think this makes you feel sick. I always talk about Pepto Bismol stocks are going up. Guess what? You're going to be sick if you miss that altcoin season, uh, uh, sitting there emotional. So, <laughs> this is again, guys, you know, it, and, and I don't want to take over uh, uh, too much of, of the time before Alaskan, but it's like if someone told you you have a multi million dollar opportunity, why would you play with that? And the only answer I can get give without signing, sounding mean is that look at where you're at now. Right. And I'm not saying anybody is. Well, I'm just saying for those people who don't get look at where you're at now, if you're not where you want to be at, ask yourself why. What did you do to put yourself in that position? Did you work? Did you study hard enough? Did you did you go harder than the next guy? Did you did you did you bust your butt in whatever it is that you're doing? Well, you, you can't do the same thing and expect different results with crypto. If, if what you're doing right now has got you miserable and unhappy. Well, guess what? You keep doing the same damn thing and you're going to keep getting the same damn results. And I hate putting it that way, but it's the truth. You know, when I when I go out to places like Dubai, which is where they're going to fly me to, I keep it straight. I talk very, you know, I've got a certain amount of time on that stage and I let people know what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. And so that's that's where we're at right now, guys. Like you have to understand this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Stop treating it like a damn lottery ticket. Stop treat like is. And that's why if you guys look at my five things that I talk about strategic plan, do your own research, uh, control your emotions. Learn to take profit. And number five might be the most important one, but it has nothing to do with crypto. And that is identify your why. Why are you doing this? Right? My why is my family. I don't cheat my family. I will not cheat my wife and kids. Right? So they say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not big enough. Why are you doing this? And so, so you need to let number five motivate you to four, three, two, and one. And if you do those things properly, you won't be sitting around worrying about red candles or this and that, if it pumps a couple of dollars, you know, got to have a plan in place, guys. The last squeeze is on you, brother. Well, thanks, man. I think, I think for, uh, we're going to have this 
issue, I suppose, with people panicking in the market for a few different reasons. One of them being people have invested too much into one thing uh, or maybe stretched themselves too far, uh, FOMO'd into something at the late stage. Um, but I think a, a big thing is crypto's still so new. I mean, yeah, okay, you can argue it's been around 10 years or whatever, but it's still a very new thing. And the bulk of people haven't they're not aware of what's going on and as they come into the market um it's new to them it's exciting and they're doing all the mistakes that we all did three four five ten years ago we all made the same mistakes we all fomoed in we all chased green candles we all did this we made stupid investments um and all the, the new people who are coming into the markets now are doing the same things i just think it's a reflection of the person who is making the comments of oh no this is dumping when moon when's this you know all these comments and stuff um it's a reflection of how new they are to the market and i think over a period of time you chill out a lot and you realize that you know what panic is what gets you up a certain creek without a paddle right you That's know cool. so they yeah they just got to kind of kick back people have got to realize that market goes up market goes down as you said jay um look at what you're investing in ask why you're investing in that particular thing you know if you are just i think there's two types of people as well there's people who are looking for the quick book um they're going into the meme coins or whatever hoping that and and it's a gamble you know and then there's other stuff, other coins and tokens that have utility. And I think the utility chills you out even more because you realize the utility is a lot more important than the making the quick buck. It's making something over a long period of time rather than trying to make it by tomorrow. You know, That's right. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh, shouts out to the uh, almost 300 people now watching in just over uh, 17 minutes on uh, X and on YouTube. Appreciate you guys in a major way. We have Liz Herrera in the house. Devon Steve. What's up, brother? Edward is in the house. We got my beautiful queen, Jeanette. I literally <laughs> before I went live, I told her about 15 minutes, babe, we're going to Dubai. So she's like, what? So, yeah, she got that about 15 minutes ago. That's funny. Uh, so let's get into the next question here. Um, will the elections change uh, things for crypto? Do you guys think these elections are important uh, for, uh, you know, moving forward with crypto? I, I think so. Um, I think Biden has proven that he's not really pro crypto. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and many of the other Democrats, obviously, Biden administration has signed Gary Gensler. And we know how that's turned out. Right. And then, crypt, you know, as far as Donald Trump, I mean, he's had kind of a change of heart as of late. Right. Uh, right. Initially, when he was in uh, in office, he was not really for Bitcoin, but he's he had an investment in the Magna coin. I think he has he holds like a eight eight million dollar wallet, crypto wallet, and it's down three million because of Magna coin. But I mean that seems a little bit more pro crypto than Biden, right? I mean Biden's pretty pretty bad when it comes to crypto. So I think um, I think it could have a big uh, impact on crypto uh, industry as a whole if uh, Donald Trump gets reelected. Yeah, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. With, with an administration change, there's going to be new excitement in the area. If, if Biden wins, then there's going to be a small lull over, you know, over the market because people are just thinking it's the same old thing and we need to try to figure out a way to get to the next level. Um, but I, you know, honestly, uh, you know, I'm not too political or anything like that, but I, I don't see us going through this election without bringing in a new administration because there's a lot of frustrated people out there, a lot of people wondering why their life and their circumstances aren't the way that they want them to be. And, yeah. and ultimately it's, you know, you have to self-reflect if you're not in the situation that you want to be in. And, but, you know, hope is a, a driver and a motivator for a lot of people. And that's the stimulus that allows people to take action in their own life. So I think that there's going to be a lot of people that are excited about this election and, um, even though we're not hanging our hats on a new administration coming in, I think if there is a change in administration, we're even going to be excited and, and a little bit yeah. more hopeful about where this market's going to go. 
Yeah, we need to get some of those old heads out. I mean, it's just, you know, some of those old uh, <laughs> those old guys, man, it, they're just not embracing innovation. They're trying to stagnate it. And I think a lot of it is just trying to position themselves the best they can, in my opinion. Just, again, my two yeah. Satoshis. Uh, go ahead, Alaska. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is um, different. Well, a lot of it's an agenda, I think, to hold crypto back. Um, hold crypto back it to when when everyone's ready for mass adoption i think there's a lot of um people like warren senator warren always on the case you know if john deaton can oust her that's going to be huge um as for a change of complete min administration it's always going to shake things up always going to make things better if there's a change because it people's attitude changes they see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel if they're unhappy you know and that changes their outlook on everything so i, th I think uh, a change in administration will be good for us i don't think it's going to be massive yet i think the massive will come once um once the powers that be decide the time is nigh yeah, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Let's have a little fun before we go into the next questions. What are some of the coins that you guys are bullish on? And this is not financial advice, just some coins that maybe you have uh, that you're excited about. Uh, because I know there's some people saying, I wonder what, what uh, Alaskan has. I wonder what uh, Frankie have. I wonder what Mike O has. I don't know if that's like my suave voice. Like, I wonder what. Let me stop. You guys go ahead and answer that. <laughs> Take take your time. You go go, go ahead, time. We'll, we'll, go ahead, Michael. We'll start with you. Yeah, you, well, well, you guys already know that I've been excited about LCX, and that's treated me pretty good. I'm still excited about it, and I think that it has a, a long way to go. I was looking back at the chart, not not comparing it to Binance, but there was a time with um, Binance when I was looking at uh, charts and just doing some analysis that it went from 15 cents to 15 dollars within six month period. Uh, so, you know, not not that LCX is going to do anything like that, but like I, I've said before, LCX with them trying to be uh, pride themselves as the most regulated uh, exchange, that narrative, I think, is going to fly through this next um, bull cycle. And then also just to throw another you know bonus um, crypto in there, I recently got involved in one called XYO, and I'm, I'm feeling really good about that. Um, you got that one from what Molly, Molly, or, or Shannon Thorpe? One of you know, I, I was invested in it a yeah. little bit, and, I, and, and you know, I, I felt a little bit better when I when when I heard her mention it and and bought bought a little bit more. Um, you know what I liked about that one, besides going into in depth about what the crypt, cryptocurrency is actually about, is I like the tokenomics on it, and I like that it was extremely cheap, and I think that. Most cryptos, especially um, ones on Coinbase, are going to have their opportunity to make a run in this bull cycle. So, you know, right now it's under a penny and it's uh, the tokenomics on it. This basically all the the tokens are in circulation already. Uh, besides all the good points of what they're doing, um, I, I won't get into all that right now, but I'm loving yeah. those two. Cool. And uh, of course, there's many other ones. Yeah, cool. Yeah, name name a few uh, is great. Um, and mm. Edward Edward said, any thoughts on H bar? My big bag is XRP, but does anyone own H bar? I have H bar, and the only thing I can say uh, about that without uh, sounding like it's financial advice is I like it a lot. There you go. Okay, let's keep it going. Uh, Frankie, let's <laughs> Frankie, let's yeah. in the last. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's funny that uh, Michael uh, uh, he mentions LCX. I actually got into LCX before it got onto Coinbase last bull cycle. Uh, oh, awesome. it was like sub five cents and I ran it up to the all time high uh, and yeah. I took profits. I actually was looking at getting in to LCX during this bear market, but for whatever reason, I was just distracted. So I didn't get it at five cents. So kudos oh, to wow, you wow. that six times. Yeah. I, and then so now I'm kind of looking at entry price because it does kind of fall into that narrative of real world assets. It's a, you know, it's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's an exchange as well. It's the ISO 2022 uh, compliance. So it does have a lot of good narratives for us. But right now, um, obviously, XRP is something I hold on to uh, and talk about here on the show. Caspa is one uh, that I really, um, I really like. And I think it has a lot of uh, uh, price growth in, ahead in the future. Uh, it's completely decentralized, uh, fair launch. It's not really on any big exchanges. So if you're familiar with how um, altcoins explode in the bull market, it's usually when they get listed on the big exchanges, right? Probably Coinbase is the biggest one, Binance, Kraken. Mm -hmm. So um, 
that's another one. And then currently actually looking at a coin called Aero, Aerodrome. It's the DEX on Coinbase's, um, uh, Coinbase's uh, um, blockchain. So, and it's it's had significant price action. I do think like uh, kind of like the BNB analysis, I do think it could, uh, the price could skyrocket into 30 to $40, you know, yeah, not financial I mean, advice, it's potential. So it's good, oh, it's good to have at least one or two of those type of, uh, exchange coins or DEXs on on hand uh, in your portfolio. Uh, and th those are three right now that I'm looking at. Obviously, there are some blue chips like Solana, which is in a bargain price right now, um, as well as Injective Protocol yeah. is a good one as well. Nice. There are bargain prices. So nice. yeah, I mean, it, that's why I'm like, I'm just kind of smiling because I got a lot of dry powder on the side. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know, kind of kind of just washed out all those gains over the last six, seven months now yeah. you know, for most of these coins. So it's yeah. bargain prices right now. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, you know, if, if the market keeps dipping down, I'm gonna sell everything and go all in on Chicago coin. I'm just kidding. Uh, Alaskan, <laughs> go ahead, brother. It's on you. I still think you should make that as your own meme coin, dude. <laughs> hey, we, 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 hey, I'm not promising anything, but it might happen. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. Um, well, I'm very much about utility. Um, I wish I had more money to spread it around, but um, everything I've got's already kind of tied up. As I get little bits and bobs, I'm starting to. <laughs> Uh, spread out a little bit more. I used to be a lot more Ethereum based in my thinking, but now I'm pretty much everything is XRP and everything that's built on XRP. So um, yeah, there's a whole ecosystem that I love and that would be the res, which, which is the Riley economic system. Um, I couldn't talk about um, digital assets without mentioning the res. It's got five coins altogether. They're all work together. Um, they're all about bringing um, innovation and um, a new way of thinking for humanity. Um, it's also very much passive based. Um, it's all utility based. So, um, yeah, I, I don't have to worry about markets per se because, you know, it's just I'm all about the utility. Yeah. Um, if looking at other coins aside from the res, coins which um i'd say i'm interested in tau uh, i think that's gonna go somewhere a few friends of mine have invested in that and ev anything i say by the way is not financial advice and i'm right. sure that goes for everybody here um, yeah, exactly. do what you want and do your own research at the end of the day um we're all individuals um yeah. make your own choices but yeah tau is pretty good i love the iso 222 coins um, I think they're all going to go somewhere in the next few years. Um, I've got a little bit of HBAR, um, XLM, XDC. Um, I had some quants, but I sold that. Um, but I intend to buy some more back again. I'm just keeping an eye on the market now. And I think my own personal view, we've got uh, several months at the end of this year before things really, really start to pick up. So we'll see. But I'm just keeping my eyes open, keeping my ears open, doing research learning as a go and go. if something has yeah. utility then i'm all about it there you go hey, always you, always you guys you guys weren't fair with me on that one james said let's have a little fun here and i threw out my 10 percenters and and you guys threw out your diamonds like the well, xlm well, you, xrp h bar you guys <laughs> come on now he well, said they, let's have yeah. some fun <laughs> well they, yeah they they covered they covered it all and that, that's yeah know, definitely so, yeah, so I mean, you know, I, I could I could go through twenty coins in in, in, yeah. in one minute, but you guys got a lot of them, so uh, all, I will buy awesome. I will buy awesome Chicago day. coin when it comes out, though, Jay. Yeah, yeah. okay, you brother. you make Chicago <laughs> coin, I will <laughs> buy some. I'm gonna make it. Here, here's the thing with that: if I do Chicago, I'm probably gonna have to tie it in somehow to your platform. I got some ideas. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, but let's sure. I got my man. Um, I got I got my man Josh says I'm bullish on dad bots. I want to give him a shout oh, out. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, that's Josh. A, that's a yeah, Josh is one of my good friends. Um uh, 13 months ago when I started this whole journey, uh, me and my wife uh, actually for you uh, been in crypto since 17, but 4 years ago we started traveling the world um and uh or traveling different places um as far as living a year here, a year there. We had this little deal uh, when when crypto did what it did for us. And so um, we went out to Sonoma County for a year uh, out in wine country and we met jo uh, Josh and David uh, and they already had this project called Dad Bods. Um, I quickly loved the concept. I fell in love with who, who they were as people. Two of the 
closest guys I've ever met close to Mike O as far as uh, how they are and what they stand for. And so um, they brought me in. I, I, uh, I connected with the project. I brought some celebrities on uh, with them to help them out. But I want to give them a little shout out. And they also made a uh, NFT in guess whose image? Six uh, Eight J. So I've actually got my own uh, tall can, tall can of beer. Uh, they, they made uh, it, it has a little bit of everything. Uh, I don't know where the goggles came from. I guess, I guess that's maybe the Kareem Abdul Jabbar. But I did have yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> I, I, did, I did. I did have the beard. Uh, that is Six Eight J. I did play basketball. Uh, I did wear a fanny pack. I still actually not a fanny pack, but I still wear like a man's a coach bag. So they put that on there. The only thing I didn't really care too much for was the stomach, but I actually do have one. So I, I guess they got that right. But uh, yeah, there go there go six eight J's uh, 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 dad bod NFT. So thank you guys so much. Love you guys, uh, Josh and Dave over at Dadbot. So now I had somebody also I mentioned uh, here. I saw them say, "What about SHX and Velo?" I like both of those coins. Um, like I said, I got a lot of coins. I dollar cost average 70, 20, 10. I have a philosophy. If you want guys want to learn about what that philosophy is and how I do that, go over to our crypto for life YouTube channel. And I talk about those uh, strategies, dollar cost averaging in and dollar cost averaging out. So guys, make sure you guys check that out along with all the incredible interviews that we've done. We just had ladies night last night and today we have hanging with the fellas. Uh, and just uh, one of the things that I just uh, put out there and posted, I'll show you guys before we move forward with our questions. And that is uh, this little um, bit that I did here with my boy, Edo Farina, uh, Farina. And it talks about, it has a little bit, I think I might've gave SHX and VLO a shout out with uh, uh, XLM, XRP and some others. Uh, take a listen. And I think uh, on the flipping of that, you've got all these influencers that are um, um, bulls or um, I mean, to the point of like, uh, overly bullish on Bitcoin, which is, look, I, I, I hold Bitcoin. I've had Bitcoin. I've been dollar cost averaging in Bitcoin since, uh, good God, like thirty seven thirty five hundred dollars or something yep. like that. Um, and, um, you know, so I'm not going to bad mouth it, but I think that that time has passed. I think, you know, when you see some of these influencers that are sitting up saying, if you just got 0 0.1 Bitcoin and then you hold it for the next 20 years, like, really, are you stupid? Like, so you're trying to get people caught up in a dream and you're trying to get people caught up in helping you live your dream is no different than when you work for someone and you're building their dream right now if you're getting a bitcoin unless you're buying a whole lot you're building someone else's dreams they're hoping that you hold that long enough so they can dump on you and so at the end of the day you've got to be smarter than that and understand okay well if i got enough money to buy 0 0.5 of a bitcoin i might have a better opportunity to put you know to invest in something like a shx a velo a, 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 a xlm a xrp uh whatever the case may be but i, I definitely uh don't talk a lot about uh, Bitcoin on my channel because I just don't want people because a lot of times what happens with people and again this is not financial advice people um, they feel less than they feel they feel inadequate uh, and I don't think a lot of influencers understand that you know uh, because you're telling them you know oh you should have could or you should do this and it's like dude I can't afford that and that's that's what makes people do irrational things like uh, take out loans and and take out mortgages against their homes because they realize they need a lot of money to follow what a lot of these idiotic influencers are saying, and I hate to say it, but I'm just speaking truth. And so when a person can just go out there and spend a little extra money and get a cool little bag of SHX for what, you know, hundred bucks, you know, a couple few hundred bucks here and there. So that, that's one of the things, Edo, that motivated me to start my channel, Crypto for Life, is what, why me and you hooked up and connected the way we did is because I, I, shoot, I shoot from the hip. And I think so that's so I want you guys to comment on that. And what I mean by that and what I was trying to say and the reason I played that is sometimes uh, and it's one of the reasons that it made it actually motivated me to start my show. Me and Mike Oates talked about this many a times is people don't take responsibility for what they say. A lot of these maxis, a lot of these guys who got into Bitcoin earlier, uh, earlier or early, which I did. But to go out there and tell people to get 0 0.5, get, you know, and it's like get 0 point, you know, one or something. And you know how long someone has to wait? for that to do anything substantial to, to make any difference in their life. Uh, but what it is, is that they're trying to keep, you know, that narrative or, or, or basically ensure that they're pumping their own bags instead of just saying, look, there's better ways. There's, there's cheaper things out there. There's things that are actually better with better use case. They don't want to say that. Oh gosh, you can't, you can't be honest, right? We can't be honest in this space. And so that's the thing that bothers me is you'll tell somebody to go spend a fraction, let's say even 10,000. And what does that get you in Bitcoin? That's not even half of a Bitcoin today. That, what is that? I mean, it's not even a quarter. So the, the point I'm trying to make is instead of sitting down and saying, OK, if you take that money and put it here, 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 here. And again, it's not financial advice, but it's, I'd rather you do that 
than to sit up there and show something like 0.1 of a Bitcoin and by in five years are going to retire. No, it's not. And so so that's the problem that I have with the space, guys, is people not taking responsibility, people shilling, people having their own uh, narratives and agendas. And it's just not uh, in the best interest of those who are watching. So uh, if you guys want to take that, you know, take that uh, and go from there, just make comments on that about. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Go ahead. You, you know, um, you know, you never know what's going to be said that can strike a nerve. And I just got to go back to what you said about um, Bitcoin. And sometimes people, if they can't afford to get a Bitcoin or a few Bitcoins, they they may feel less than. So you try to stay away from it and avoid it. But I, that struck a nerve with me because there there may be somebody listening to this right now that's thinking about going to get a mortgage in their house or selling a property or sell, selling a car or, you know, throwing out money on their credit cards just to try to do what they think is um, catching up per se. But we all have our own lane. If you st There's infinite amounts of lanes. If you stay in your own lane, you're not going to run into traffic um, in your own lane. You have smooth selling in your own lane. You got to do what's best for you. Don't put yourself and your family in a, in a bad scenario. Um, you, you know what's best for you. Um, and that that's just so important to hear James say something like that, um, to, to be speaking to that one person right now, that one person that is that already called the, uh, the, their bank to see how they can refinance their house or already has the approval, already has that car up for sale that 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 they know they need to get to work. But they think that they can do something um, that's going to maximize the potential and not think about the downside. Um, you know, um, you, you have to live within your means. We all want want to get to a better situation for ourselves, but we don't want to make our situation worse in the process of trying to make our situation better. So, yes, you can make sacrifices, but don't make the sacrifices so big that you cannot recover from the decisions that you made on a hope and a prayer without legitimate foundation to what you're doing. That that I, I really appreciate you saying that, James. And I just wanted to put kind of put a, a little extra spice on it. So somebody realizes out there that if it sounded like he was talking to you, he may have been talking to you. He may have been trying to stop you from doing something that maybe your wife or your husband doesn't approve of. And you're trying to do that on the side because you think it's just going to all work out and you're going to be the savior. Um, you, you have to be practical. You have to be rational. This is a new market. Um, water hasn't found its level yet. So slow your roll. Think about what you're doing. Think about how you're doing it, doing it, it, make it make sense. And then, you know, be, be willing to fail, but be willing to fail within the confines of your actual life. So you don't ruin it. That's right. Yeah. Facts. Well said, Mike. Yeah. Anybody else? After you, after you, Frankie, if you're good. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, yeah, there, there's a lot of people on YouTube that can mislead you, right? There's the, like the influencers and there's people who are educators. And then there's people who have like the best interest for you or in mind for you, right? So um, you kind of have to decipher that. Um, I was I was slightly victim to that, right? I mean, I think a lot of people are. If you look at the bigger channels uh, channels on YouTube, a lot of them are were are and were uh, paid chillers. You know, they get five ten thousand dollars to mention a coin that they don't believe in. They'll put out a five ten minute, probably like a ten minute video, uh, usually talking about the coin that they don't believe anything about it, and they don't believe anything they're saying, but they're putting it out there. And you'll probably see those as more as we get into the bull run or in the mid bull run. So just be careful with that. Um, always do your own research just because it's if it's if, so, if somebody's mentioned on YouTube, it's likely you miss like the big gains already. But, um, you know, it's potential that 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 coin can do even more X's. But you have to you just got to research it. You know, um, I think the easiest thing to do and it's not easy at all, but is to be a long term investor. But you have to exercise a lot of patience. You have to do your yeah. research. Um, I think one thing is beneficial to learn in this market is just learning some technical analysis. Just even the basics will help you make educated decisions on when to purchase coins, when to sell, things like that. So I would uh, I would definitely advise people to um, look into that. Well said. Well said. Alaskan. Yeah. I, I 
I would agree with everything you guys have said. Absolutely. Um, I would add um, FOMO is very real fear of missing out. And I think influencers um, who do not have your best interests at heart are playing on your FOMO. Um, They are pushing the coin. Now's the time. Buy in now. If you ever see anybody on a hard sell, whether it be on X, whether it be YouTube, um, look at other videos and and other things they produced. And you can guarantee the previous one from the previous week or the previous day was pushing a completely different coin. And then look at the one before that. Same deal. And it's the same sell over and over again. Now you get some influencers who are sticking to the same one or two coins. And that's because they have faith in that coin. They're true to their word. They're believing in it. They're not just on a hard sell selling a new coin every week to anybody who will buy it. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I think a lot of times what we don't realize is for every success story, like there was a, a coin that launched on Solana, a meme coin, and a guy put in like $69 and made $2 million. For every story like that, there's thousands of people that get wrecked, thousands of people that yeah. don't, uh, yeah. don't uh, get anything. Uh, and what people don't realize is that's why, you know, it's, I try to stay uh, with what I've heard since I've been in the space and what I, what I know, which is um, 90% of the assets that are out there right now. And I mean, it goes beyond coin market cap or coin gecko and anything you can find. There's there's maybe 30,000 or some crazy number like that that probably exists. They're, they're launching every single day. Uh, 90, I always say 90%, but there's been people who are very credible who've come on my show and said 99% won't be around. Yeah, uh, right. You got you to gotta understand that most of these are started by people who are just trying to make a quick buck, uh, trying to get to a certain... Uh, you know, uh, uh, level as far as what it's worth so they can dump on those who are, and they have no type of, if you think for one minute they care about you or care about, you know, because it, here's what I know. If you're, if you're waiting for <laughs> four zeros to drop, they're going to be gone in two. You know, if, if you're waiting to sell, you know, uh, at, at, uh, at one cents, it, it's probably going to go, you know, it's, it's going to rug pull at three zero. I mean, just telling you guys. So, so you just got to be careful guys. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, that's one of the things that used to irritate me. I would get on and some of the people I thought were very credible when I first got into space, I would look and they would be shilling Clifford, the big red, big red dog and leprechaun coin and all these different coins that are no longer here. And I remember one time my wife and I, we were at, um, we were at a, um, I can't, she's here. Uh, I think we were like at, a. um, she's in the space right now. She, she could probably correct me, but we were either at a, um, what's that karaoke or some type of like, deal like that we walked in and we were just trying to get our get to know our neighborhood we just bought a, a place out in sonoma county up in wine country uh like i said we left california we were kind of going a year here a year in hawaii year you know all that kind of stuff and we decided to get a place up in uh, sonoma county and we were trying to get to know the area's beautiful retirement very high end area and we were walking we we're just doing one of our our nightly walks or, or mid mid evening walks and we walked into this place and um uh, there was like some games going on people had different uh, uh jerseys on and this one guy uh Pretty smart guy, very smart guy, uh, uh, had a background in IT and some other things. And we just started talking. And I think at the time I used to wear, I think I was wearing like a crypto shirt. Like right now I've got my, uh, what, like my Ripple shirt on or whatever. So I was wearing some type of shirt. And he goes, oh, you're in a crypto. I said, yes. And we start talking and come to find out he had been drinking and he started bragging about him and his friends who were in the IT uh, or in, the, in, the, uh, in that space uh, creating uh, meme coins and dumping them on people. And and I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna tell you how small of a circle it is. One of the coins that he talked about was a coin. Remember, I talk about 70, 20, 10 dollar cost averaging. One of the coins that he talked about was a coin that I put a little money in just to see what it would do. And he was bragging about how, and this is on my on my kids, my mom didn't. I'm telling you, like it, it, you couldn't have made this up. And the Brooklyn in me, the Brooklyn in me wanted me to want wanted to choke the hell out of him at that moment because he didn't realize that I was one of the guys that he rug pulled on. Wow. But, 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 but the business guy, me knew better, obviously, but, but, you know, I'm, I'm a little too old for that now, but, uh, Mike kind of knows me back in my crazy days. <laughs> but, uh, the point I'm trying to make is, is that it, I just had a, it was like a moment and I looked at the guy and I was like, man, there's so many people like this guy that all he yeah. was, was bragging about the money they made, bragging about, bragging about how they rug pulled on people. And I was one of them. And I just, mm-hmm. I could not, I could not believe the, 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 the chance of me walking into that, 
uh, karaoke place, whatever it was, and him being there half drunk, bragging about shilling on people or, or dumping on people. And so you just got to be careful, guys, because it's real. So a lot of times when I talk about the things that I talk about, it's not because I think or I read or I'm, I'm, I'm going off someone else's opinion. You know, if you go over to our um, I actually pulled it right now to our Crypto for Life page, there's an actual um, I don't know if you guys remember this, Frankie or Mike, but there's a there's a um, show that we did is D.A.N.G. And I'm not going to yeah. say who those people are, but that's an initial. Those are initials of people that I know in my personal life in crypto that lost everything in crypto, mm -hmm. everything. Now, I've got some videos that talk about success, but these four people and it just so happened. I mean, if you guys remember the slang back in the, uh, the day, dang, these are real people. They're not a part. They're not necessarily in my in my uh, in my crypto for life group. But these are people that um, I know personally because they've come to me. I'm talking and, and I'm, I'm going to say this, guys. I wasn't planning on saying this. Uh, my wife said, yeah, it was remember that karaoke thing, babe. I, I walked out and I was like, man, babe, I feel like going back in there. Choking that guy. <laughs> but um, these are people, grown men. That over leverage themselves. Grown men, some of them took out loans against, and my wife knows these stories because I would go to her just to decompress because I was I was taking these stories in. Grown men that were crying. Grown men that would call me asking me to bail them out. Grown men that were taking out loans to get into certain projects that are no longer here. And they kept doing it. And, 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 and every time they lost, they kept trying to get back and would lose even bigger. I'm talking about people who were in, in 2021, we're just short maybe of, of being worth a half a million mm -hmm. to having to having nothing, right. to having to sell what they had to just pay bills so their wife wouldn't leave them. They, they had to get rid of their cars. They had to move from nice homes. I'm, I'm, this is as God is my witness. I can't make this up. I can't right. make this up. And I'm not telling their stories because you will never know who they are. I'm just giving an example. And the reason that I feel motivated to do that like I did on, on that show is because someone needs to hear that. Someone yeah. needs to hear that. This market, mm -hmm. like you said, is fairly new, but it, and it's and it's so unpredictable. I'm just telling you guys right now, it, it's it's if you do it right, again, you can't do what you've done up to this point because if if you don't need to, I'm gonna tell you, there's very few people that I know that are here because, um, for uh, not I wouldn't say not for money, but they're uh, that already have it. Mike O, I said humbly, that dude's worth tens of millions of dollars. He doesn't have to be here. He doesn't have to do this. He doesn't. And I know him like I know like I know myself and what we've done in our lives prior to crypto. I, I didn't start this show because I need it. And no, Mike, you know this as well as I didn't start this show because I need it. There's right, no right. reason for me to be doing YouTube. I'm not shilling. I don't need notoriety. I've been on some of the biggest stages. Mike knows. And I say this humbly. Magazines, awards. That's why I'm being asked to go to Dubai in May. I'm good at what I do. My wife has been at those seminars with me. She's in the stream where she would go, oh, my God. And half of the damn room would be crying when I got off stage. I'm good at what I do. And I don't say that to try to boast or none of that. I'm saying that when I speak, I'm saying it from a place that's so authentic that it, I just need you to listen to me. Because a lot of this stuff uh, I've been doing, it's hard to be on the phone with the grown man crying. It's hard to be on the phone when he says, my wife is going to leave me if I can't get some money. It's hard when you said, man, you know, make smart decisions and they don't listen. And then they call you asking you about, it's hard, man. You know, mm -hmm. people who've had three homes and sold the first one and then sold the rental house and now they're in a trailer. So all I'm saying, guys, and, and however that hits you, what, whatever. Some of you guys may not care. Say so move on to the next thing, and that's fine. But it's real. It's real story. So all I'm telling you guys, please be careful. Please be a great student. Please do your own research. Please don't over leverage yourselves. Right? This is for your family, but don't destroy your family in the process. Okay, guys. Anybody wants to uh, comment on that? Can I? Can I? Can I just add add something to that, Jay? Yes, I, I think a, a lot of people. Um, well, 90% of the population don't get any financial training in school and no education, no financial training at all. That's why most people, when they like win a million on a lottery, they're like, they're broke 10 years later. You know, it's all gone. They don't know how to deal with money. They don't know how to deal with the wealth that's, that comes their way. Um, they FOMO into things and stuff. Um, our main CEO suggested to us all that we all read a book and that book is called rich dad poor dad That's right. now if you if yeah. you can get that you can listen to it um just in your car while you're driving to work it's an audio book as well uh robert koyasaki or i'm probably pronouncing it right, uh, wrong but robert excellent Kiyosaki. book yeah robert yeah Kiyosaki. excellent book real easy to read finance broken down into the basics 
um, teaching you basically what you should be taught in schools and what they don't teach in schools because they yeah. don't want you gaining wealth. They don't want you doing well. They want to keep you a slave in society. Absolutely. So, yeah, if anybody out there, get yourself that book, read it. It'll work wonders for you. It'll really put you in the right mindset for things. Yeah, I want to make a comment on what Optimistic Prime said. No wife should leave if you're broke. And I agree with that. But it's more than – it's not about being broke. It's about a partnership. It's about honesty. It's about transparency. It's about if your wife – if y'all have done things together – to put yourselves in a position of having a new home, a nice home and having nice cars and doing things for your, your child. And all of a sudden you go out and make irrational decisions because that's not being a good partner. That's not, and I'm not saying, I'm not justifying anyone. I'm just saying that, you know, it's not that, you know, this person or couple guys, you know, it just, it, it, it put a lot of strain on their relationship. So it, 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 in one aspect, I do agree that if life just gets in the way, if things just so happen to happen, you better believe like my, my wife has been there through thick and thin. And so has Mike's. We've we have those. We've all fought, fell. Uh, every guy that I've known who's worth millions of dollars have lost everything twice or more. Straight up facts. And Mike, you and I are one of them. So at mm -hmm. the end of the day, all I'm saying is, is that I'm not saying that it's OK to leave. I'm just saying it's also not OK to make decisions while consulting your partner, period. And when you're doing desperate things that can destroy your livelihood and, and you know, your, your, the comfortability of your family or even your children's future, I don't, I don't think that's something you should be doing. So, uh, but definitely appreciate what you were saying on that optimistic uh, mm -hmm. problem. No, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, phenomenal book. Absolutely. So uh, anybody funny. else want to make a comment on that, uh, Mike, Michael or uh, Frankie? Frankie, you can take it. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> financial literacy is not something that's, you know, given in the, you know, in the school system, right? And if your parents weren't given it, you have to educate yourself on it, right? And then educate your children. Unfortunately, it's just not a primary focus of uh, in the school system, you know, and, and it's like we talked about, right? They want to keep you stuck in that matrix, because if you do have financial literacy, you will see what kind of, or, you know, with that you're wasting time and that, you know, the retirement plan that's set up for, you know, social security is, is not really adequate or enough uh, for all the effort and work and time you invest into a company, right? So yep. th that's the one thing you can't, your most valuable asset is your time. So Facts. choose, you know, use it wisely, right? That's something you can never get back, right? And we're all, we all have our expiration date, so you just want to make the most of your time while you're here and have the biggest impact on your loved ones and friends and people's lives as you can while you're here. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I, Michael? I, I think to myself um, often, I, I tell myself this, I say, how lucky am I to have a best friend that spends his time every day trying to figure out who the most brilliant people are that he can bring on his show to to share their perspectives and their education and their knowledge with with everyone how lucky am i to be in that situation thank you brother and wh while i think that though i I'm, I'm a little bit cheated because not only is it just me that gets that information it's all of you guys also so you guys <laughs> are in that same <laughs> situation that I am. And I, th I think that's a actually a, a fantastic situation. Now I'm going to take it a little bit more personal and like, that's my buddy. That's my friend. He's bringing people on that are giving us all the, all these nuggets and, and all this information that's helping us all get to that financial uh, scenario that we all want to be in. Um, but you know, that's my best friend. You guys can't have them, but you guys <laughs> can have, you guys can have the information too. So it, it, it's actually awesome. But I, I just mentioned that to, to, so people can see it from this perspective. Like I really appreciate it and I really understand what he's doing from a personal point of view. And I just want people to understand. And I say this all the time when I come on to to um, understand that uh, a lot of times people that are in a situation like James and have uh, had some financial success, they're they're not giving back in the way that he is giving back. And this information and this value is um, it's it's incredible. So I, I'm, I'm appreciative to be part of it and to have um, James as my best friend. I appreciate you, my brother. I appreciate you in a major ways. Thank you very much and, and well said. Um, let's let's go back into these questions because I know a lot of people are saying, um, you know, let's get back into uh, uh, some topics maybe they want to hear about. Thoughts on this stable coin that Ripple just talked to, that just launched. How big is that in you guys' opinion from a personal perspective? Because you got a lot of people when it came out and they were like, oh my God, does that mean XRP is going to be, you know, pegged to, you know, a dollar? And I'm like, 
Did you say that about BNB and BUSD? Like, are you not under? I mean, again, it just it just behooves me how people are just that short minded when something comes out instead of seeing the positive. It's almost like people are looking for a negative thing. Like, OK, the price is down. There's got to be something bad with Ripple and XRP. Just what? And, you know, if you look for something long enough and hard enough, maybe you find something that you don't like that. Maybe Brad doesn't wear the kind of suit you like or maybe, uh, he, you know, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have your name, but it's not going to be anything of ethics. Or, or doing the right thing or first cut because that's exactly what Ripple is. And and unfortunately, I think if you keep looking for things with that coming, you're not going to find it. Maybe go over to a different project. But um, so you guys have thoughts on that Ripple's X, uh, Ripple's uh, or XRP's launch of a stable coin. How important it is, uh, is that? And uh, not only to uh, XRP, those of us who hold it, but to the crypto uh, ecosystem as a whole. Yeah, what? I could go. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I think... I think it is just kind of a knee jerk reaction to it. I think they're expecting different news. Um, but like you mentioned, I think you can't go wrong about adding liquidity to XRP, right? That US that 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 stable coin is add liquidity, right? Um, you're gonna have a USDX, I guess. Is it is that what have they announced what it's gonna be called? I'm assuming that's what it's gonna be, but you you can't go wrong by adding liquidity. Any kind of DEX or uh, blockchain that has liquidity is going to be successful. So this is XRP's attempt to add liquidity to their ledger uh, to be successful going forward. And we don't know what their plan is because they haven't laid out a blueprint for us. And it's we're doing a lot of speculation and kind of uh, following what they're doing, right? So I think it definitely is a positive uh, uh, positive news for the XRP uh, coin and and the community. I think people just need to dig, look below the surface, and actually yeah. understand what is the purpose and what utility does it serve. Right. Yeah. And and before going to Alas uh, Alaskan uh, uh, squeeze, it's like I, I talked about this with I think Jake uh, Claver, uh, uh, and I think I don't know if you caught you guys caught that show, but I was talking about remember that old game back in the day, uh, guys. It was like connect the dots, or like it was like a it was like a picture but you had to draw the lines in order to really see it. But if you really look yeah. hard enough, you can see the dots. It, it's like everything Ripple's doing is not shiny. It's not sexy. It's not as attractive as Chicago coin and other coins that are out there. But as you start seeing the connections, as you start seeing like they weren't firing, they were hiring, they brought in some of the most powerful people. They got a stable coin. When you start looking at the dots connect, you're like, oh my God, this is huge. So, so it's like the turtle in the hair. You just got to know what you hold, guys. You just got to know what you hold. Go ahead, Alaska. Yeah, it's it's all steps in a direction, and Ripple know exactly where they're going. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping the cards close to the chest with regards to you know vocalizing what they're doing and where they're going, right. but um, their actions speak loud, as far as I'm concerned, and the work that they put in. Every single step is a step in a certain direction, and I think the stable coin was a uh, was a next step. It was an obvious next step that was going to happen. Um, I think with Tether, the way things are going there, I think uh, I think Ripple are poised. Um, they position themselves really, really well um, with bringing this out. I'll be curious to know what it is they're going to call it. Yeah. Um, and there's a part of me has this little speculative thought that like could this if if xrp is going to be what we all think it's going to be is this stable coin going to be something that could replace something else that's financially collapsing right now yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's it's you know i just i just think ripple have positioned themselves to to dominate Right. At the moment, the, the, you know, they've got so many connections around the world with so many large banks and what have you. Yeah. XRP is going to be the bridging between everything. And yeah. now they bring out a stable coin. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, well, this is interesting. I'm curious to see how this is going to pan out. Yeah. Will they yeah. just call it X and we'll all be spending X at some point yeah. in time? Maybe Elon will spend a little yeah. bit too. But um, yeah. no, I think... I think <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the things that come to mind, uh, Alaskan, hearing you talk, and you just kind of trigger something in my in my uh, in my thoughts as far as some things. You know, you look at the biggest stablecoin on the planet, which hasn't done anything right, hasn't even had a full audit. Every time they try to get audited, they they pay a fine to get a, a, a small audit. They've been tied into Evergrande, one of the biggest corrupted things going on right now. They said one of the biggest scandals ever, bigger than Enron, bigger than FTX, bigger bigger than anything else. Um, and so I've always said that's the ace of spades. And so what I've learned about 
Ripple XRP, they don't necessarily need to be first and fast. They they typically they they always do things the right way. It's all strategic. It's all a part of a, a bigger agenda, right? Um, and if you don't think they got it right with this stablecoin, then then you're not paying attention. Um, Tether could be one of the biggest implosions in crypto. Period. It might be the biggest because a lot of people attribute the sixty-eight thousand dollar run in twenty twenty-one to Tether printing money. A lot of people do. Um, and when you look at some of the things that we're seeing now, even with Bitcoin pumping past, you know, uh, without uh, altcoins uh, following, the, the volume wasn't there. There's a lot of ETF hype and a lot of, you know, stuff like that. So if Tether goes down, I think um, obviously you got USDC, but I think obviously a lot, a lot of that will shift into uh, some of the pre existing things like USDC. But I also think that uh, there's a lot of things we don't know about the stablecoin with XRP. Uh, that, that they haven't unveiled yet. They can't. And yeah, uh, it's still it, happening it, behind the scenes without oh, a yeah. doubt that we don't know about. Yeah. And I've been saying this for a while. It's the day I said, I'm excited about the things I know. I'm excited about the things that I've studied and done my research on, but I'm also excited about the things I don't know. And every time I turn around, every time I turn around, there's something else that they unveil that is amazing, whether it's a medical acquisition or other uh, companies acquisition or a stable coin. And you just, it's like, it's just phenomenal dots that are being connected. And they're not weak dots. They're strong, bold dots uh, that has to do with things globally. And so you just, man, you know, I, I don't know what that thing is that we all have inside of us. I don't know what that thing is that makes you want to go out and shoot 5,000 shots at 3 o'clock in the morning to be better than the next guy on the basketball court. I don't know, you know, and I do know that because I, I had to do those things, but I don't know what it is to, you know, uh, that that thing, whatever that thing in us, that competitive thing, that thing that makes you want to be great, the thing that, that that you know, that, drive, that you. Dri drive you to success. Uh, I don't know what it is. I just know I got it. Me and Mike talk about this all the time. We always talk about the four types of people, and and, and I – I, I had to uh, bring this to Mike's attention here not too long ago. The four char characteristics of people, right? Four characteristics of people, which is dolphin, shark, urchin, and whale. And I don't know if you guys ever have you ever ever heard, heard of that Frankie and uh, an Alaskan uh, Alaskan uh, squeeze. So, so a shark is a person who's a go getter, a motivator, uh, just driven. Uh, uh, they're typically they they lead by example. They're leaders. They get things done. They're typically business owners. That, that's the good thing about a shark. The bad thing about a shark is, and, and it's not. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. But the thing that can make a shark bad is sometimes they'll run over people to get to to what they want to get to. Sometimes they'll do whatever it takes to win. You don't have to be both those things. You can pick and choose what you stand for. A urchin is a person who likes information. Documentation beats a conversation, right? They always do their due diligence. They're the kind of people that if you want the right answer, you go ask an urchin. The bad thing about an urchin is sometimes they'll think themselves right out of a great situation, right? So, so you know, it's called analysis paralysis. They'll study, study, study until they find that one thing that, they, that won't make them act. The, the next thing is a dolphin. A dolphin is the kind of person that just wants to have fun. If I can do it and if it's fun, oh, my God, I'm in. If crypto's fun or if this is fun, you know, they're in. The bad thing about a dolphin is sometimes they don't know how to delineate between fun and being serious. These are people who like to surf or people who like to live on the beach or people like, you know, they, they just don't always get things done. And it doesn't have to be either way. You can have fun and get things done. So I'm giving you the good and bad. And the last thing is a whale. And the greatest thing about a whale is they have a huge heart. Whales are typically people like pastors and teachers and people who do things uh, out of the love for others. But not a lot of money involved. The bad thing about a whale is that a lot of times they let people take advantage of them. They got such big hearts that people run right over them. And so I remember when I was coming up, coming up and speaking, and, and, and Mike actually went online and took the test. They tested us uh, through these, these courses that I took in order to learn how to speak and be a motivator many, many in my 20s. Um, and it determined I was a 75% shark. In all the great ways of being a shark, I was I was 50% whale, 5% uh, dolphin, and 5% urchin. That was my uh, that was my because you don't have to be one particular thing. Some people are just one thing. Some people are multiple things. I think when you're multiple things, it allows you to recognize. So, for an example, if you're a if you're a sales, let's say you're a, <laughs> if you're a car salesman, you know, if you use that, if someone comes in, I always say the greatest thing that God gave us is two ears and one mouth. Listen more and talk less. A lot of times we we have such an agenda, which is what's wrong with a lot of these influencers. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Chicago, Chicago, whatever it is, and you're not listening. You know, if you listen to someone, they'll give you everything you need just by listening. And so that's like walking to a car salesman. He goes, oh, my God, man. Hey, wh welcome to my car lot, uh, uh, Alaskan Prime. 
I'm sorry, Alaska Squeeze. You can get this Corvette. You'll get all the women. And you're like, wait a minute. I don't want a Corvette for women. I came here because I got five kids and I wanted a, a, a minivan. All you had to do is listen. So now you've offended me and I'm gone. So that's that's the whole thing about those those types of uh, people. And so anyways, I got on a tangent, guys. I, <laughs> it's one of those things. Yep. That, so it was cool because Mike actually jumped on and found out a lot more about himself in that whole equation. If you want to speak on that, Mike, if not, we'll move on. Um, I'll, I'll go to the actual stable coin. Um, I, we don't know exactly what the plans are for that, but the only thing that I see with the stable coin is so I'm not a, a poker player, but I, I do know that you're not supposed to show your hand when right. you're playing poker. You you got you you might bluff, you might do this, you might do that, but you're not supposed to show your hand. And with uh, them coming out with the stable coin right now, just what it tells me besides me not knowing exactly what the plan is for the stable coin is that they are really close to some type of settlement because you're not going to show your hand uh, before you know, you're not going to show your hand and let um, them know what your cards are. You're going to basically put yourself in a position. And that's why I think that the price has been where it's at right now. Also, it's kind of kind of staying in the same same space is because they're going through this lawsuit and they need to get things worked out. They don't want to show how big and bad and beautiful that they are at this particular time. So long story short on the stable coins, I think that to me, that just goes to show that they are really close to getting this this settlement done and they want to be in position to just go ahead and move forward with all the the plans that they have wow I, it's mm -hmm. funny because just you know again about controlling emotions as we talk when i started the stream bitcoin was 67000 dumped down to uh, 61 in a matter of moments um and xrp which was maintained yeah, I was watching about, that. I'm saying, just went down to just went down to 47 cents so i mean guys look you, you got to uh, again this is not shocking. You got to know what you hold. You got to be prepared. You got to understand. Um, but just as we were live, this happened. Literally just tanked. I mean, Bitcoin just bled all the way out. Uh, literally, what, six, five, six thousand dollars or so. Uh, and and re the rest of the market just went went down big time. So, you, again, but I say that just because I, I, just, bought, I just bought some XRP last night. Darn yeah. it. <laughs> so, so, no, no, the, the point, but here's the I point bought some yesterday, too. <laughs> but, but here's, yeah. But here's the point I'm trying to tell you guys. And I was talking to Mike about this. I said, brother, look, and that's my friend. So I'll be a little bit more <laughs> uh, 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 open with him. I said, you know, we were talking about certain coins about, and I said, man, I just think there's going to be better positions. I think there's going to be better entry points. You just got to be patient. And, and it's, that's what's playing out right now. So, um, you know, this pump, a lot of people thought it was, I wouldn't say artificial because obviously you had a lot of money coming in, but you got to say, man, big money's going to dump. Big money's going to dump. They're going to dump and, and and wait for the prices to go down to re uh, the re uh, enter. Um, a lot of this was that Bitcoin ETF hype. You know, it just it wasn't sustainable. I mean, look how fast we went up. And so, yeah, we're definitely going to have uh, I think even more retracement um, uh, as the markets cool off. And, and this here's what's so funny: this always, if you've been in crypto long enough, this always happens right before the happen. People are like the happens coming to happen. No, it's <laughs> the, the the run was before the having. That's what people don't realize. It's not the having that causes the run. It's the run happened before the having. Then you get up to the having, and that's when the dump comes. And then you got that, you know, that capitulation, that sideways sideways movement for, uh, you know, six to eight months, or whatever. Six months, so, yeah, yeah, six to eight months. So, uh, anyways, guys, let's get right into it. So, obviously, uh, moving forward, you had, uh, and by the way, shouts out to the six hundred plus people that are watching on uh, uh, live on X and YouTube. Appreciate you guys in a major way. Um, Let's get into this whole thing with Stephen Narrow. Obviously, you guys seen him all over the uh, the you know uh, crypto space on various shows. Some of the biggest shows that are out there. He was on our show as well, uh, along with Fruition Productions, Chris Maya, and many others. Um, he just announced that he's suing the government for nine point something billion dollars. Um, your thoughts on that? I don't know if you guys have caught that at all, but um, you know he's he's seeking some justice, man. I mean, this guy talked about how when he was with Ethereum, he he turned down or, or gave back whatever, like a million Ethereum, and you know because he saw things not going the way they were supposed to. Obviously, we know the story of him being mistreated, being uh, them run, running their in his house, uh, throwing him in the back of a van. Uh, so he, you know, and and he's smart because. Um, the fact that he's got on all, all these different platforms, talked about all the stuff that he has, exposed a lot of the things he has to, to people like John Deaton and other lawyers, I think is brilliant because when you when you let so many people know, it's hard to do something you know to someone like that that's been everywhere. So it might be pretty brilliant what he's done, and now he's filed this lawsuit. What, what do you guys think about that uh, as far as him filing? What do you guys think is you know you think he's going to get it? You think you know why 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 did he do it? Just your thoughts if you don't mind. We can start with the last squeeze on this one. Yeah, I, 
I think like any um when you when you're doing anything like this, you've got to start high. You know, it's the same with the SEC and Ripple and what have you. You always start as high as you think you, you can and you're gonna come down and meet somewhere in the middle. Um I don't think anything is ever gonna happen with regards to Ethereum. Um <laughs> I just don't. I, I, there's too much. Too much. When there's too much corruption in yeah. something, when when there's too many people involved, take uh, FBX and Sam Bankman Fried. Same deal. If they find a fall guy, they use that fall guy. Everybody else is. Yeah, it's okay. We're all good. You know, let's leave it alone. Um, and I think that's as far as Ethereum. The Ethereum thing is going to go. I, I just think um, they'll put on a little bit of a show. Um, he'll get a settlement. Um, if he doesn't accept it and pushes it, then threats will come. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, I just think that's the way the world we live in right now is a very, very sad, scary, corrupt world. Um, everyone is out for everything they can get. Everyone, especially the people in power, they're just after lining their own pockets and stuff yeah. and yeah. protecting their own. And if you're not in the club, then you don't matter, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's funny because uh, I see so many comments, man. <laughs> people are saying two for a dollar. People going, you know, saying a lot of stuff about XRP and other other assets. And again, uh, know what you hold, you know. And, and again, you, number four on my list of the five things is take profit. And I was telling Mike this the other day. I said, look, I cash out about a quarter of a million of my XRP, a quarter of a million of XRP. Now, that, that's still a fraction of what I got. But the point is, is that I knew something was coming. I'm not stupid. We, we talked about this, didn't we, Mike? Uh, and yeah. so, and so, <laughs> so uh, you just got to be smart, man. You got to learn how to take profit. I'm not just leaving a whole lot of money on the table. And uh, it's, and again, it's a plan because that, you got to do it in levels. You got to do it in levels, right? So, uh, but anyways, go ahead, Frankie and uh, and Michael. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was I, looking at... Um, go for it. Go for it, Frankie. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was just going to say, uh, it looks like uh, that the, the government had dropped their case against uh, Stephen Roth in May of 2023, but he's alleging that they um, they kind of framed him to get uh, evidence on other crypto, other yeah. leaders in the crypto industry. Yeah. So, I mean, they might have been scared away of the evidence he had on Ethereum. You know, they put, they could have been you know told to pull back this guy has evidence on ethereum that can bring it down and we know a lot of yeah. people in the government are you know they back ethereum you know and and they're mm -hmm. they gave ethereum the pass they gave btc a pass you know so uh he may have a case you know nine billion oh you know it's gonna be that's gonna be difficult uh to get from the government but um uh, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how that plays out yeah yes yeah, uh, seems like to me um it's you know, I have to be fair on both sides. I mean, we're we're all in in rage about them wanting two billion dollars from Ripple. He wants nine billion dollars from the go government. It's it's all smoke and mirrors. We don't know what the master plan behind this is. Yep. It seems like Ethereum got got a pass, but it may have just been to slow Ripple down because they didn't have the infrastructure in place. And um, you know. Brad Garlinghouse is going through this trial like, you know, with no stress at all, just moving along. I know I've been in litigation before. It's not fun. You know, sometimes it, it spills out into your regular life and you you uh, may yell a scream or snap at somebody every once in a while. But, you know, I, I'm I don't I'm not a conspiracy theorist or something like anything like that. But maybe um, this has been designed. Um, the infrastructure wasn't in place. Um, you know, they had to spend a little money to to go through this case, knowing what the outcome might actually be. Yeah. And now that they have things where they need them to be, then um, XRP is going to be the American love story. And now it's time to go after Ethereum because Ethereum is uh, in the wrong position and they're not supposed to be in the position that they're in anymore. So, I mean, that's just one way of looking at it. I mean, I don't know the master plan, but usually if there's something on the news and and, and we're, we're worried about what Kanye West is doing, then there's a, a, a war on the other side of the, the world that we're not supposed to pay attention to. So, um, you know, there there's, you know, the smoke and mirrors, basically. Um, they'll, they'll settle it out, um, you know, like Alaskan said, they'll, set, they'll settle it out and we won't hear too much more about it. But as far as Ethereum, they're, they're not going to, 
put them out of business or anything like that. I just think that ultimately, I think we're all in the in in the right place with XRP, and and they're gonna be victorious and and overtake Bitcoin at some point. I mean, that's that's the bottom line with all this. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to take time. It's funny because yeah. if I was to read a, a few of my questions, uh, uh, number one was I'm not one, number one, but one of them was uh, what what happens when Bitcoin hits 100k? What does that mean for crypto? So you know, we could actually talk about that because it's still relevant. One day it will hit that. And then two of my other questions were: um, when it comes to XRP, many people have chosen to walk away. Um, what keeps you invested in XRP? We'll, we'll ask the question. And another one was like, why do people get frustrated? And I think today is one of those reasons people. It's just, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of laughing because it's, it's humorous to me. Even when I hear about like the two billion dollar lawsuit, I talk about it because it's it's news, but I love it because it just is validation. And, and validation to what? Validation, in my opinion, that a settlement's coming at some point because it's like you ask for something. I don't care if you ask for ten billion. You ask for something. So so that means the talk has started. So so I look at things a little differently because again. Uh, I can laugh, you know, <laughs> um, at the scenario uh, uh, just because I guess my plan is in place. It doesn't matter where I don't, you know, I've heard some people say that we could see a 20 something cents XRP. Okay. And that, that will make many people's, you know, um, stomachs very upset. And for me, it's just an, another opportunity to buy. So again, guys know what you hold, have a plan in place, but let's, let's go with that one. Let's go with, um, I'll, I'll forget the hundred thousand Bitcoin right now. Let's go with, uh, when it comes to XRP, people have chosen to walk away. They get frustrated. What keeps you invested in XRP? We'll start with, uh, whoever wants to start. Doesn't matter. Not all at once. Yeah, I, I can start. Yeah. No, remember I mentioned, uh, I mentioned. Uh, no, 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 last you, you, no, 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 you know, we're all so polite. No, no, it's not polite. It's not, no, 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 everyone right now is a little bit low key pissed. Like, damn it, do I even want to say that right now when it just dumped out? <laughs> no, actually, when we, when we get off, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a little bit more personally. That's what I'm going to do. You know, that's kind of what's on my mind right now is I hope it doesn't yeah. shoot back up. I need to buy a little bit more. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at these prices and I'm like, wow, it's just, it's it's <laughs> bad, uh, you know. But if you've been through it, you know that it's you want to buy on the red days, right? You don't want to buy on the green days. Yeah. You don't want to chase candles. Yeah. But as far yeah. as XRP, I was talking about the last time I was on here, James. As far as like the XRP chart versus Bitcoin, that it looked yeah. a little bearish and it looked like it was in a rising wedge and it looked like it was going to break down. So mm -hmm. pretty much playing out. Uh, not really that surprised. Um, uh, on the price action, you know, and that's just indicative of what Bitcoin was going to do, right? Um, we know that Bitcoin is going to drop, but alts are going to drop harder. And that's just, that's the way it is right now is everything's coupled to Bitcoin, unfortunately. But at some point in the future, will it be? May not, probably not, you know? Yeah. So um, it is frustrating, but like I said, uh, if you have an understanding of technical analysis, or if you follow uh, somebody on YouTube that's, you know, reviews charts, you know, I follow multiple people. Yeah. Um, that uh, kind of give me some technical analysis breakdowns, uh, part of a couple of trading groups, just so I can have, you know what I mean? I can't spend, I spend a large majority of my time on YouTube watching, you know, crypto videos and uh, a lot of my free time, right? It's like crypto, either I'm watching YouTube crypto videos or I'm at the gym or, you know, I'm just relaxing, you know, with my family or doing something with them. But, um, you know, crypto is like my part time job almost, <laughs> you know, I probably dedicate three or four hours a day, you know, towards crypto. Uh, yeah, but right. yeah, I would say incorporate that um, and, you know, your research of the fundamentals, right? Uh, incorporate technical analysis. That way you're not too surprised when th these things happen. And if you don't have the time to do that, then, you know, find somebody that's really good um, on chart analysis on YouTube that can save you that time, right? Because if you know, at least they, if they can tell you about what Bitcoin is looking like, then you know the alts are going to follow that pattern, right? So just, just try to be strategic and use your time wisely. Uh, that you have i agree i agree right we we all um james mentioned this all the time about people wanting microwavable results and a lot of people are going to get shaken out because they uh, are looking for fast money the unfortunate thing is not only do they get shaken out but they sell at a loss <laughs> i mean you 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 buy in at 60 cents and you see it drop to four, 45 cents and then you're like oh crap i better get out of this i can't afford to lose this money and the only reason you lost the money is because you sold and that's just, that's just uh, the bottom line you can you you know it's going to go up and it's going to go down 
But man, with XRP and everything that we see going going on and how they've been building out their infrastructure across the world and spending $200 million, you, you don't fight a case and spend $200 million just to say you're the winner. I mean, you, you don't do that. It, it, they see that there's a much bigger picture and the value a lot more than this little bit of money that they're they're spending on this case. So if you go with the evidence and you see what's going on, they keep um, building out their infrastructure, making new agreements. Um, they're spending this money on this lawsuit. It, it's obviously telling you that in the, they expect big things for the future. So anything sub dollar right now, um, I mean, it's just a, it's just a great deal. I, you know, of course, there's going to be meme coins and there's going to be um, other projects that are going to pump a lot harder than XRP. But also we want to be involved in something and we want to be there for the long run that's going to be here in five years or 10 years. And I think that we have enough evidence to realize that that SRP is going to be one of the the cryptos that 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 hangs around, and and um, it's even going to be here after we stop stop calling it crypto. It'll just be digital assets, and um, we'll we'll be able to to be here for for that benefit um, because the microwavable um, results. Obviously, you leave you leave your food in too long, it gets burnt, and um, that's what people are doing right now. They're getting burnt by selling out of their good positions, chasing bad positions. And um, right now, um, you know, it, it sucks to be a little bit down, but also I'm excited to know that here in the next few minutes, I'm going to buy a little bit more XRP so that I can get my bags up. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think there's here, here's the thing, guys, I, and, and I, Alaskan uh, Squeeze still has to comment, but I don't want anyone thinking that when I make these comments or the thing that we're talking about, XRP is not the only one by no right. means. Um, is not the only one. Um, do some of us feel it's the, the best long-term option? Absolutely. But is, is it the best short-term op option? Not necessarily. So you just got to do your research. You got to have a plan. You got to figure it all out, man. Um, and I think when you do that, it'll keep you from, you know, panicking and feeling emotionally, uh, you know, down when things like this happen today. Uh, it could get a lot worse. And, and you have to understand, if you take the things that we're dealing with today, are you sprinkling maybe recession, depression, uh, uh, you see it in, in uh, like a great depression. You, you see, um, you know, these things happening in China where a lot of these, you know, I, I shared the other day, I think it was Jake Claver showed a building that uh, in 2006 sold for 205 million, but then sold here not too long ago for 3.6. Uh, one of the biggest buildings mm -hmm. in St. Louis. I mean, real estate crisis, uh, global crisis with just various things. I mean, this could get a lot worse before it gets better. And if you think somehow crypto is going to rise when everything else, I mean, in the midst of everything else fall falling, I don't think so. I think it, it will thereafter when there's a bit cleansing, but um, you just got to be prepared for the, uh, the, un, uh, the unknown. And, and that's just really what it is. And uh, like I said, I'm not, you know, staring at your bags is not going to do it. Um, uh, panicking is not going to do it. Just have a plan, stick to that plan. Um, and that's really all I can tell you. I'm in this so long that Today's prices, yesterday's prices, you know, if XRP drops to 20 cents or drops to two dollars, it's still not part of my plan. You know, I have, I have a plan um, and I've already, you know, uh, implemented some of those, those those strategies and taken profit. But you just got to know, you know, what your what your uh, your uh, your strategy is and stick to that. And your strategy is not Mike's strategy. And Mike's strategy is not Frankie Legend's strategy. And Frankie Leg Legend's strategy is not uh, Alaskan uh, um, Squeeze's strategy. So uh, you got to have a strategy, guys. And so uh, go ahead, Alaskan. It's on you, brother. Yeah, I think what's keeping me with XRP um, is having looked into it, having seen what's being built, what's being created, looking at the bigger picture for the economy, not just of the United States, but also of the world, seeing how everything is struggling. We've got bricks starting up. We've got so much happening in the financial world and the political world. There's a lot of upheaval coming. Um, anybody who has any kind of foresight and knowledge as to what the future may hold knows we're going digital um what form that will take you know we don't know right now but we can all hazard a guess my guess is everything's going to be xrp orientated running on xrp are there oh, going to be other coins still available and around absolutely there's lots and lots of coins built on ethereum platform and then you've got bitcoin they're not going anywhere the quality ones 
So what we'll see is that 99% of coins that disappear um, will leave the quality behind. Um, and the quality will mostly be um, coins and tokens that have utility. Um, they actually do something. There will be a couple of meme coins around here and there just for fun. But I think with the economy going the way it's going, I, I feel safer and better taking my money out of a bank. And again, this is not financial advice, just my way of doing it. I feel a lot better taking my money out of the bank um, and having control of it myself in the form of Bitcoin. Uh, uh, sorry, in the form of uh, uh, digital assets, XRP and what have you, and everything that's being built there on. Um, I have control of it. It's my wallet. I'm in possession. No one can take it away from me. If there's a bank run tomorrow, there's only enough in there to pay the bills and stuff. And as soon as I can pay bills with my um, digital assets, I'll be doing that too. That's right. You know, so yeah, that that's what keeps it's a new financial system, a new way of doing things. Everyone's going to head down this road eventually. Everybody. Um, we are right at the beginning. We're right at the forefront of this new fantastic uh, financial system and this new fantastic way of being in control of your own finances. It's financial freedom. Yeah. And that's absolutely. why I'm in where I'm in doing what I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, brother. Well said. So uh, we're going to, we had a few more questions. We're going to go in and pass those up because uh, we're at about a, a, a hour and 25 minutes. We've got seven, over 700 people watching live. So final thoughts um, as we exit, um, anything you guys want to say to people that are watching, people out there struggling, whatever it is, final thoughts. We'll start with Alaskan um, squeeze. Uh, the, the last comment will be the first uh, to go. Um, yeah. I would just like to say if you are new to, uh, the digital asset space, or if you've been here a while, um, try and look into the future and see as much as you can, see where you think things are going. Yep. Try and invest. If you're going to invest in something, invest in something that has utility, that actually does something. Sure, you can gamble on different coins that just go up and go down and do your own thing. But um, if you... Today's life, you are very busy, at least I am, and I'm sure a lot of people are. Life is hustle, bustle, there's lots going on. Um, for me, it makes my life simpler and easier if I'm invested in something that I know is going to be utilized by the world, by society, by people right across the board. So if you can find coins and tokens that actually help in everyday life, that's where I would, I, that's where I choose to head because I don't have time for um, following charts too much and, you know, in and out of this, in and out of that, risking money. I'm a single dad, two little boys. I, that's my priority. What I'm building is for them. It's for their future. Um, I, I play safe, you know. Um, I haven't got a lot of money to gamble um, and take big risks. I'm not prepared to um leverage my house or anything else that's important to me and to my boys on a gamble on a whim that's you know right. be sensible about what you do do your own research um check everything out and if it feels good to you do it if it doesn't feel good to you don't but right. do talk about it with your partner too <laughs> yeah i love it i just saw my buddy uh, ex, uh, uh edo farina says you wake up tomorrow and xrp is 30 cents what do you do uh, buy more. Anyway, buy more. Uh, yeah, buy more. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, go ahead. Frankie Ledden, you're next. Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, I was talking about how I, I feel like Bitcoin would hit that 61K mark. So just keep an eye on that. If it doesn't get back above 65, 67K, um, I had it like in an ascending uh, triangle um, that was going to break up. So, but BTC is kind of tricky. You know, it could. Uh, jump back into the pattern. So if it climbs up to 67K, that means it's back in the pattern and that's kind of a bullish move. However, I'm looking at the the daily, it's looking like kind of like a head and shoulder pattern, but the head looks a little funky. So if we lose this 61K, definitely look at the 50, 57 to 51K region. Uh, you know, just be careful. Don't don't put all your money into this dip now. Just dollar cost average, just be safe. You know, that that's going to be my strategy. Um, so just make sure that you're keeping an eye on and doing your own research. Well said, brother. Well said. Michael, it's on you. 
Yeah, emotionally, um, it, it's the fear of loss is greater than the desire to gain. So um, we do things the opposite of how they should be done. A lot of times we'll, we'll buy at highs and sell at lows um, just because we have that fear of loss. Um, but this is the time that community is good for all of us because we can come together and remember some of the things that were said uh, on the stream and throughout our research. Um, you know, you want to buy on the dip. You don't want to FOMO into uh, um, different projects when you see the price pumping. And you need to have a strategic plan um, that'll keep you focused and, and disciplined when times are a little bit tougher than, than other times. And so I'm really appreciative of, of the community and, and what we have going here because it allows me to stay grounded and understand that when I get off of this stream and I buy more XRP, it sucks because why are you buying and everything's falling? But that's the time that you do buy. You don't buy when it pumps and it's up at 80 cents and, and everybody's happy and everybody's euphoric. Um, so I just want everybody to understand that they need to, to have a plan, stay in your own lane. You hear things like um, with leverage, um, you know, my first go around in the stock market, I used a lot of leverage and I would um, listen to different things on YouTube and different um, people's opinions. And I've heard people say, oh, I don't use leverage. I would never do this and I never do that. And I'm and the first time around, I'm like, man, these these guys are stupid. Don't you know you can make more money that way? I mean, it's simple. You you know, you have a hundred thousand. Now you have five hundred thousand. But I I was I found out that you lose money <laughs> a lot faster. Also, so you have to you know stay in your lane and understand that we're all on here because we think that we have some value to to offer. And some of these lessons that we've learned the hard way are lessons that we're uh, communicating to the communities to try to have someone else not have to deal with the the struggle and the pain that we've dealt with. So leverage is not ideal for me. Um, also, um, you know, if you've been sitting on the side, sidelines thinking about when is a good opportunity to, to get in, I'm not saying get in right this second. But I'm saying that it's a lot better time to get in now than it was maybe even, what, five minutes ago? <laughs> so you, we, we got to, you know, that because that happened really fast. Um, but, you know, just just um, have a strategic plan and remember community. Remember that that um, we're on here giving um, our personal experiences to the community so that we can all um, end up in a better situation. Yeah, well said. And if, if someone was to ask me, is this a good time to get in? I would say absolutely not. If you have to ask that question, absolutely not. Um, and, and that's really the right answer. Uh, if you have you're, to you're, one, sorry, if, you're, you're all going to see a green candle shortly, right? Because my co is going to go buying on XRP as soon yeah, as we close yeah. down, right? So watch yeah, out for yeah. that big green hey, spike. But, no, but, but hey, let, let, let me yeah. say this too, because I don't I don't want anybody to, to misunderstand uh, as far as my strategic plan. Yes, I'm going to buy right now, but my plan is not to sell next month and, and my plan is not to sell in six months. My plan is not to sell in a year. So I'm loving these sub um, dollar prices, but um, I'm, you know, if I can get in under 50 cents, I'm, I'm, I'm just a buyer because of my strategic plan. If you're going to need that money here in the next two weeks, or if you're going to need this money in the next two months, please don't follow my lead because my lead might not make sense for what you plan on doing. So, you know, just, just think about my plan is not your plan. My plan is my plan. So let's, let's, let's keep it at that. So, 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 uh, great, great advice. And so, uh, back to what I was saying, this is not a good time for anyone to buy that has to ask that question. Um, trading and leveraging, uh, all that is why those grown men called me crying, why they lost their homes, why they almost lost it. So, so I don't recommend that to anyone. And, and the reason that I say that is if you're a professional, if you study and if you learn, God bless you in all that you do. Uh, then that might be the right opportunity for you. But I say these things because I'm the one who gets a lot of these calls and it's devastating. Um, and I, if you have to ask the question, is this the right time to buy? I get, I get asked this every single day. You shouldn't be in crypto. You shouldn't be in crypto. You shouldn't be investing. Don't invest until you know the answer for yourself, period. And so that's the right answer. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's yeah. something I think we can all agree on. Uh, because again, it, 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 I can't tell you how many times I go to my wife and I'm just, I'm emotionally drained. I tell her almost on a daily, I said, honey, I am drained because with every amazing story, there, there's there's more negative stories. There's more 
Uh, I'm not sure. I'm uncertain. I've taken a loss. I've done this. Oh my gosh. What am I, you know, and it's just, that's, that's not how Mike got to where he's at. That's not how a Frankie legends in the position of being as calm as he is right now, or Alaskan uh, squeeze. We know what we're doing. Uh, and it's not, and, and one of the good things that Mike said, you know, <laughs> don't try to compare yourself to a guy worth millions of dollars. That's that's not the thing to do. So Mike's advice is probably not going to be something that's going to work for you. Meaning that if Mike says, I'm going to go out and spend a hundred thousand, well, he can do that. So, so you just got to fit you know, because some people might have 20 bucks. Some people might have 50 bucks. And so I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just being very, I'm just being very honest. We, you know, everyone has different levels. Me and Mike have gone out and watched each other blown thousands of dollars, just having fun in the night. So it, it's, it's, it's not the same story. And I don't say that and impress you just to say, don't dare compare yourself to anyone else. Do what's best for you. Do what's best for your family. If you're freaked out right now, the chances are you shouldn't be doing anything except for studying. This is a time right now to do your own research. This is the time if you're uncertain to get back to studying and figuring out what your next move is. Because remember, whatever I do, whatever Alaskan Squeeze does, whatever Frankie Legend does, whatever Mike O does has nothing to do with you and your family. And you guys got to remember that. So, so uh, with that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys. Also make sure you go over to our crypto for life uh, channel guys. Um, Support the channel. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and notification bell. So you guys don't miss any of the incredible information on. Uh, we've got some amazing interviews, guys. I got more coming up. Speaking of which, uh, I've got literally going into this whole next week booked up with people. Uh, it, it's, it's not stopping. The requests are coming in like crazy. Uh, make sure you guys check us out tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I'll have the one and only James Ray XRP on the channel. And that'll be followed up on Monday. Um, uh, I can't think of my brother's name right now. It's all on my schedule. Matter of fact, I can just pull up my phone. How about that? So on Monday, as I look at my schedule here, we have... Um, uh, let's see. We have Armando Pentoja. And then Tuesday, we have Meta Lawman. Now, I've got Wednesday and some other ones that are that are waiting for confirmations. I've got Coach JV and many others uh, that are uh, that I'm waiting for feedback and some really influential women as well. So, guys, stay tuned for that as well. And I, I'm still working on a guest that's going to be legendary. The biggest guest I have up until this point, I'm working on that. So, a uh, lot of great things happening, guys. Make sure you guys tune in. I appreciate you guys and made your way to my guests. Alaskan Squeeze, Frankie the Man Legend, and my brother from another mother, my best boy, Mike. Oh, we appreciate you guys. Guys, make sure you guys tune in every single day, typically around 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and also catch our evening streams like Ladies Night every Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until next time, it's your boy James, a.k.a. 6AJ. Peace. <laughs>